Now I wish to tell you the story of supercomputing in India. Indeed, I've been waiting to hear it. It was 1985. We had finished this development of electronics. Electronics was everywhere. That was the, the uh, process. And unfortunately, Mrs. Gandhi, who did, uh, I think this uh, started, uh, in a way, started Electronics Commission and Electronics Revolution, she was assassinated. She was assassinated and um, Ms. Raju Gandhi, her son, crowned as the, I think, Prime the Prime Minister of India. And he was a young man at the time, the interest in electronics. He was used to get all the, as a pilot, used to get a lot of devices with him. A lot of electronic devices with him. He knew about computers. Computers were not, computers had come to India, but not as gadgets. It was only at institutions. And he, and he started that, why can't we have liberate our electronics policy and make electronics pervasive? And particularly computers, he said. And uh, he was responsible to liberate India's, uh, what do you say, the license raj into a new economy of modern India for development and set the process of uh, technology based industrialization rolling in India. Now, he, at that time, we were trying to get supercomputers in India for one, one entire reason that India lacked weather forecasting. India did not have its own weather forecasting, what it, we had in Europe, what we had in the US, what we had in Japan. And um, and he wondered that why can't we have weather forecasting? We are trying, but we required a supercomputer. And India did not have one. And we were, we had ordered a supercomputer from USA. And that was the supercomputer mean, means Cray machines at that time. Yes. Cray was, Samuel Cray was the founder. Yes. And Cray used to manufacture computers. And and Cray, was, supercomputing was a, something like a a technology which uh, U.S. did not want to give it to anyone. Okay. No, mm. because it was the basis for their defense tasks yes. and their Star Wars mission. Yes. So we requested for, we wanted to order it, but uh, Department of Commerce denied the export of supercomputers from the USA. It was a double-use technology, dual-use technology. Then Raju Gandhi decided, I will meet President Reagan. Reagan is a good man and he's a large-hearted man. So I will talk to Raj Reagan that why we require it and perhaps uh, convince him. And uh, they decided to sign his technology, high technology accord. He went to Washington and there was a discussion going, which went on. With uh, President uh, Reagan. President Reagan. And uh, Reagan agreed that we will give a supercomputer. But the defense guys, I think the other guys, yes. the Secretary of State said that this is, this is a strategic technology. We can give perhaps an old model of supercomputer to them, which not the latest one, but with conditions. And the condition will be that India can use it only for weather forecasting. And there will be there, there will be a surveillance of the use of the supercomputer. And if India uses it, and the Secretary of State made a statement, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi, Mr. Prime Minister, if you use this supercomputer for anything else than uh, weather forecasting, we will see to it that even a needle or a pin will not come to India. That was a restriction put and obviously Mr. Raju Gandhi felt very humiliated and he came back and gave a challenge that why can't India do supercomputing or so on. At that time there was a scientific advisory committee to the Prime Minister, Prime Minister. and they decided, he asked one day, they, one of the meetings, they said, he said, Raju Gandhi asked him, what is India good at really? Yes. And at that time, one of the members, uh, uh, Ms. Dr. Rodam Narasimham, professor from uh, Bangalore, Institute of Science Bangalore, said India is good at this. Yes. This. Indeed. Indeed. So India should use this and um, do something, really. Then the, uh, the, the technology came, then when the idea of supercomputing came, he said, we can. We can of do. Of course. We can create our own supercomputer based on some emerging technology called parallel processing. This was a decision taken. Dr. Mashilkur, all these people, uh, Professor yes. C.R.R. Rao, all the members of this one, we decided to launch a parallel processing mission or a supercomputing mission. And so on. Then who should head that? Mission was launched because Sam Peter was here. He had created a magic in telecom. Yes. Through CDOT. Yes. And telecom. And um, then uh, the question came, Mr. Nambiar, at that time, who was the chairman of Keltron, had through ITI become the secretary of Secretary of Electronics, Department of Electronics. And Mr. K. R. Naren, who was his great friend, became the Minister of Science and Technology. Yes. So that combination was there. And then decided who 
can take the challenge of supercomputing. Yes. Mr. Nambia said my name because I, I worked with him. Yes. yes. And suddenly he called for me and uh, then he asked me the question. He asked me head cost. I was in the beach of Kihim walking around and I got a television. At that time, there was no telephone. I was, I was given the, the, some, the telephone is coming from Delhi. Yes. So I ran on the beach and went, took the phone and he said, Dr. Bhatkar, can we do supercomputer? And I said, why not? <laughs> <laughs> why not? I didn't know. That I had not studied supercomputer at that time. And then suddenly called, called me to Delhi. And then we discussed how it should be done, what should be the architecture. I, called, I talked to my engineers in Trivandrum. I talked to other engineers. I started studying feverishly. There was no internet at that time. Yes. There was no internet. I started studying the journals. And I, I just understood broadly how it, it can be done. I knew one thing. I cannot develop or we cannot develop a supercomputer like Cray. It has to be entirely different. Yes. Because we can't develop those special chips. Only only US knew how to develop the special chips and Japan was creating such chips. So only two countries could, if at all, could make the supercomputers and that was US and Japan. Japan and not Europe. Yes. Not even Europe. So their technology for the chips, yes. that is easier logic, yes. then the, what is of the the special cooling arrangement technology which you require, yes. where the chips will get very hot. The special cooling, exotic cooling systems for that, only US and possibly Japan would develop. Yes. And then when he said, this is not the path. That was absolutely clear to me, this is not the path for India. And then I started studying parallel processing. Anyway, I came to Delhi and when we decided that supercomputing mission, there were three, I remember a special meeting which took place with Mr. Raju Gandhi, with K.R. Narayan and others as the Minister of Science and Technology and Mr. Nambiar and myself. Yes. Uh, and I knew that there is a meeting with the Prime Minister and this issue is to be discussed. Mr. Raju Gandhi was a very, very soft person, very soft yes. Prime Minister and, and then we are discussing can we do it and how to be done. And it was already decided that such a thing should be done. No. He asked me three questions. I knew because having worked with the government for eight years, yes. I knew how Prime Ministers are busy. And we cannot answer questions, we cannot answer with a lot of things and big answers. Um, I knew I had to answer clearly, yes. but definitively. Yes. I cannot put condition this and that. My father used to work with ministers in the foreign office. Mm -hmm. And they would say to him when he came up with a bright idea, put it on half a sheet of note paper, my boy. Yes. Half a sheet of note paper. Yes. Just like that. Two paragraphs. So I knew that answer has to be clear, crystal clear. And this is a, this is a mini meeting will not take place again. Yes. So he asked me three questions. One, Dr. Bhatkar, can we do it? We saw Dr. Bhatkar, can we do it? I said, I have not seen a supercomputer. I have not seen a supercomputer. I have seen the photographs of supercomputer. Hmm? Picture of, pictures of supercomputers. And I can tell you only, only from my inner confidence my inner voice or inner confidence that we can do it. If you say, ask me the question, can we do it? My answer is one word, yes. Yeah. Second is, he asked me the question, how much time it would take? I said, same time as we took to ask for one supercomputer from the United States. Yeah. We started 85, it is now 87. We have wasted three years, three years in the same time, we can develop the entire technology of supercomputer from scratch. Yes. And that was the second answer. Yes. He smiled at me. And he said, then third question was, how much, what funds, budget it would take? I said, this can be done at the cost of ice, one supercomputer. Not only one supercomputer will be created, but the entire institution which will develop future generation supercomputers, we would have created. So he smiled. He laughed. He just called for the file in which the note was written, which was earlier. Yes. And he said, mission is approved. Brilliant. And the mission was approved. I proposed at that time that it would be one institution like C dot, yes. what Sam Petruda created, Center for Development of Telematics, we will create an another institution, Center for Development of Advanced Computing Technology, yes. C DACT. Yes. which later became CDAC, not technology, yes. but entire computing itself. And that's how the supercomputing journey began. And I said that where it will be done later on, not, not in this meeting. Where it will, I, I proposed that it should be done in Pune in a university campus. 
and that's how it came into Pune University and CDAC started on 17th of March, 88. Brilliant. That's oh. a marvelous story. Thank you so much for telling it.